Biobalance HealthCast Episode 185, Research on Aging, Blood, and Hormones. Biobalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of Biobalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast. This week, Kathy and I are going to talk about a couple of research reports that have come out in the media recently that we think are pretty fascinating, uh, although we have lots of questions about it. And and the newspaper reports aren't the scientific reports, and so they're, uh, they sort of skim them for content and then summarize them in pretty much layman's language. So not really. Yeah, it's not really layman's language. It's well, still hard not, it's still hard to read even as a physician to well, really get the whole point. So so the first report we're going to talk about was published in the Washington Post on May the fourth of, of twenty fourteen. And it was a story about uh, parabiosis mm-hmm. where they took a young rat and an old rat and they cut skin patches from each of them, not off, just loose and then sealed them together so that they grew together. So these two rats were attached. And as a result of that attachment, uh, they they crossed blood flows. And the old rat and the young rat shared the same blood supply then in their bodies. And for 15 days, for f- which is like, I don't know how many rat years. I don't know anything about so. rat years. <laughs> but they then investigated the results, and they determined that The young rat was demonstrating some of the signs of aging, Mm -hmm. and the old rat had improved cognitive function and muscular function, uh, was able to run a maze faster than Mm -hmm. he had been or than the, I think, than the young rat now could. Uh, His fur got better. He looked better. He looked younger. Yeah, and so it was, uh, the pictures were amazing, but, but the concept is fascinating because it opens up a whole line of research it still needs to be done on humans uh, if we go in this direction. And the company that's done this research is now ready, according to the article, to start some human testing. Mm-hmm. And they're going to begin with Alzheimer's sufferers. Mm-hmm. They're uh, not going to be linking people together. No, no. They're, they're going to be getting what <laughs> they consider the active ingredient right. out of the blood of young subjects. Which and, is a protein substance. Which is a protein substance. Called GDF11. Right. And they are going to be giving that to patients who have Alzheimer's in hopes that that will uh, reverse their Alzheimer's and they'll be able to think again. I mean, it would be amazing if this Oh, that would be such a blessing. It would just be a miracle for so many of us Mm -hmm. who have Alzheimer's in our family and who are look. You know, I did the genetic test that said... um, my chance of having Alzheimer's is three times normal. Now, that's really scary. Because of your genetic history. Because of my history. genetic history. Right. It doesn't, but I can alter that. <laughs> I can alter that by replacing hormones and, and taking supplements and exercising and living a healthy lifestyle. I can alter my genes. You don't, it's just, it's not a death sentence. No, but one of the questions that this but research I'm then opens up is, is where do you get the blood or where do you get the GDF-11? Do you, do you mm-hmm. have to get it like from a daughter or a grandchild mm-hmm. uh, in your genetic line or can, can you get it from mm-hmm. a friend? Uh, can you get it from anyway. a bank the, of blood donors? Mm-hmm. And so, and, and another question is, if you start receiving those kinds of treatments and you experience positive gain, mm-hmm. then if you stop receiving those mm-hmm. treatments, will you lose that gain? They don't know any of this yet. They're well, most most biologic systems. If you, I mean, same thing with testosterone. Same mm-hmm. thing with uh, TA sixty five. The the um, Nobel Prize winning supplement yeah. that actually can make your telomeres longer. They Testosterone and TA65 both have have the uh, biologic or follow the biologic tenant that if we make people healthier and then we stop the treatment, right, it will slowly go down as if it it is going to where you would be at that age anyway. So it has its own aging process, and, and right. whatever gain you experience, you will gradually lose if you don't maintain. Right. Okay. If you don't keep Tri- keep being receiving treated. the treatments, right? Now, um, bone mass is a little different. Bone mass is if you receive um, bone building 
uh, from hormones or mm -hmm. from medications, and then your bone mass is A, then it will not go back down to where you are, but it'll start dissolving just as it would normally at mm -hmm. that age. So it's not as rapid a drop. Okay. So if we dissolve 1% per year and we have built up 10%, then that's going to take us 10 years to get back to where we were. Okay. So this process that they're talking about with, with the mice is similar to what happens when you replace hormones with pellets. Yes. And if somebody starts hormone replacement mm -hmm. and they receive the, the benefits that you talk about, mm -hmm. uh, if they stop hormone replacement, then over a period of months, they'll see themselves sort of sink back to that same point they were when they started? Nope. The same, they sink back to the same point where they would have been when they stopped. Because I have people who have been on 10 years. Wow. And so when you start at, at 45 mm -hmm. and we've brought you up to a level that's a 35-year-old and we keep you there, you're still aging. Right. And your, your normal testosterone uh, production is lowering and lowering and lowering. So basically, we bring you up to a 35-year-old level. You stay there, and then you come down when you stop taking it. You get to 45, which is where you started. Right. And then now you're, you're you keep going down, down to, to 55, which is where, where you are. You are. Yeah. Okay. So, so basically, slowly, it comes back down to where you would be if you took nothing. If you nothing. never had any treating at all. Right. Okay. And that's how they describe the TA-65 it you know it gives you that benefit, but then you start aging again. So when we were talking about doing, doing this podcast on this topic, and we were we were discussing what they're calling GDF eleven, we we're doing a lot of research to try to find out what is it and where does it come from mm -hmm. in the body. Uh, it seems to be involved. If I'm understanding mm -hmm. what we found correctly, it seems to be involved in the in the womb and in the, mm -hmm. the generation of the uh, the fetus. Right. It's in the, it's the um, effect is in around the sacral area of the, of the um, embryo. Mm -hmm. And it helps with developing the, uh, the, the backbone and, and the neural, neural tube. So if they, if they can make this artificially and create a product called GDF 11, mm -hmm. and then you can get injections or, or what have you to get those benefits, that, still raises the question of do they have to have the original source material from someone in your genetic line mm -hmm. or can they get it from anybody or, or can they make it bioidentically like they make the testosterone pellets? My, my thought, my, this is a guess, mm -hmm. my thought would be that we know the gene or we know the chromosome 12 is where the architectural plan is to right. make GDF11. Right. So it's in all of our cells. It's in all of our genes. So we know that we all have the same plan and the same sequence of, of um, amino acids that actually um, promote the production of GDF11. But it's, it's making it. Right. And wherever it's made in the body, then that should be circulating in the blood. So it's not that you have to be the same genetic type. Okay. The g genes, they, they had to be the same genetic type because they were hooking two animals together. Right. So they were That was sharing one blood, and they right. didn't want them to share, share blood. But this is, this is cleansed of blood. This is, this is like if you were to take it out of, out of a, a bl bloodstream, it, as long as it doesn't have antigens on it for blood, mm -hmm. then you can take it out and, and wash it and then use it okay. from one person to another. Okay. That would be that would be the most basic way to do it. The more advanced way to do it is to find out how to make it mm -hmm. and then make it chemically or find chemically is how most drugs are made or find it, a plant that actually has G, Those GDF ingredients. 11 as a molecule in a plant and then right. do it bioidentically. Right. Take off the rest of the plant and then you're isolated with this one this GDF one 11. protein. Yeah. So those are the two ways I would foresee that someone is going to make this. Mm -hmm. And then, then the trials begin. Right. Then you have to decide, was it something else in the blood mm -hmm. that caused this? Was it something that, that the animals were sharing in the probiotic? Pro, right. probiotic 
probiosis? Or is it really GDF-11? Because a lot of things are going through the blood. And right. my mind is, yes. my mind is that young rat had plenty of testosterone and plenty of growth hormone, and it was being transferred over to the old rat. And that old rat feels felt better, looked better, decreased aging, and stopped the aging process, just like what I see in my patients when I give them testosterone, just like what I see in my patients when their testosterone drives the production of growth hormone. Mm-hmm. So it's not about necessarily sharing blood. It's sharing the hormones that the young animal had. Right. So going from there, you have to think, hmm, GDF-11 or hormones or both. Yeah. Because I think the hormones, testosterone specifically, is necessary to make this whole process work. And if they don't use that with the GDF-11, I'm not positive that it's going to so, work. So again, when you're reading mass media, you don't see the actual scientific work. So you don't know what the variables are that they excluded. Right. And in, in order to say, oh, it's GDF-11. Right. And one of the questions you would have is, did they somehow exclude from their their test process so that they could just measure GDF-11 uh, and, and attribute all the benefits mm-hmm. of change to that? Mm-hmm. Uh, or did it also include things like growth hormone and testosterone? Is that right. part of the mix? Or did they take that out of the blood? I mm-hmm. don't... I, yeah, we don't, I we don't know doubt from that. They, the I mean, reporting. they're just hooking two animals up. Well, they didn't with the rats, exactly. With the rats, they're not taking anything out. Right. And that's their primary. That's their primary um, test or investigation. Mm-hmm. But you know, when I used to do OB, every once in a while, in a blue moon, some patient who'd had a bad delivery had to have blood given to them. That's the biggest place where we use blood. It's trauma and. Uh, obstetrics, and so it's, it's the most frequent reason that in the um, 1800s women used to die in childbirth. We didn't have blood banks, and we couldn't give people blood to to refill their tank after they bled so much from from having a bad delivery. So once or twice I've had to do that with my patients, and one one of my patients that I remember specifically was getting blood drawn, and they had changed, or excuse me, blood given, and they changed the little the little uh, uh, bag of blood, and they put it in. And she, I was talking to her about something else, and she, her eyes lit up, and she looked at me, and she goes, wow, that that's great blood. She goes, I feel really good. I'm starting to feel like I could get out of bed now. You know, I'm like, sounds no. Sounds like a vampire movie. Yeah. No, I'm like, yeah, it does. Yeah. I'm like, no, 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 no. And so you never know who the donor is, but you, I'm assuming it's some 18-year-old kid mm-hmm. with tons of testosterone and growth hormone, and it's making her feel good, young, good, healthy, and and it's giving her what she should have, along with giving her the ability to carry oxygen in her blood. So it has a lot more, blood has a lot more stuff in it than just oxygen. All your hormones are there. Your thyroid's there. Everything is running around in your blood. So to me, this doesn't mean it's, I mean, I have to read the study, but I can't get access to it. But I haven't been able to tell how they've ruled the other stuff out. But Well, they in, in the reporting, they talk about three studies. Mm-hmm. And they said in particular, uh, the, the first study, the one where the, where the two rats were uh, Parabiosis, parabiotic, mm-hmm. where they blend, put mm-hmm. them together. Uh, that they, uh, as their tissues began to fuse, the mice now co-joined shared a single blood supply. Pairing old and young mice or heterochronic parabiosis has become an unexpectedly insightful tool for research as we age. So a few recent animal studies claim to increase longevity. In 2009, a dr- drug called rapamycin was shown to extend lifespan in mice by about 10%. And then a calorie-restricted diet uh, also showed uh, that kind of improvement for mm-hmm. monkeys. So they were suggesting that the rapamycin and the calorie-restricted diet would help you live longer, mm-hmm. just live longer, not necessarily better. Mm-hmm. And then they, they added the injection of GDF-11 mm-hmm. to the mix. And what they said is that uh, the rapamycin and the caloric restriction can give you better longevity but not better life quality. And the GDF-11 can actually reverse some of the effects of the aging process. So, so we're still back to your quality. question. What's in the GDF or what's, well, what's along given with it? it? 
Yes. Yeah. But so. it gives you better muscle strength, better heart faction, uh, function, uh, and better cognitive process. All things that testosterone give you. Exactly. All so. things that growth hormone give you. And we just give testosterone, and it improves growth hormone. So both things can be can be from, just from the blood and the blood of younger animals or people. Well, and when, when you're taking it, and again, if it, the, the reporting of the research, not the research itself, so we're, we don't want to misquote the, the real research. But apparently one of the benefits is that you start to produce stem cells again within mm-hmm. your own system mm-hmm. if you have this uh, younger blood mm-hmm. or this component of younger blood. Mm-hmm. That it, it says even in mice, as they age, their production of stem cells declines. Mm-hmm. And it so does. when you put the two mice together and they share the same blood supply, there was a crossover effect. And the older mice began to have stem cells that would then repair damage that needed to be repaired. So but that's heart what t- muscle testosterone stronger. does the same thing. When we have people who want to go get stem cells put into their knee or their hip or, or they need, you know, they have some usually joint problem Mm -hmm. that they're getting injections of stem cells for we we get the patients that are over 60 where they've had a biopsy of their fat and they don't have enough stem cells because that's when stem cell life drops then we place them on testosterone and we after three months their stem cells are back to normal or great and i had one of those um injections in my thumbs from doing so much surgery and Uh I didn't want to have another carpal tunnel surgery. And when they took my stem cells out of my fat, they said, you got to see this under the microscope. It looks great. These look like really young stem cells. They're going to work great. And I went, you got great fat. (laughs) I got great fat. And so I, it was amazing, but they still weren't hearing me. That's because I've been taking testosterone and it's been helping my growth hormone for the last 10 years mm-hmm. when I did that. So that it's that is cumulative. I mean, that gives you better stem cells. You can heal yourself better. Yeah. So well, that's that, important. You know, there was but another report. Is it GDF? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, what was that commercial? Is it? Yeah. Is, is it, it yeah. real or is it memory? Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Is it GDF 11 or is it testosterone and growth hormone? I mean, or something else. Or something don't else yet. that we haven't figured out. But apparently there is something in younger blood. Yeah. That can help. Well, I'm not debating that at all. Yeah. Uh, there was another research All of our hormones. <laughs> that was out this week, and I, and I don't have the source in front of me, but it was a story about uh, muscle regeneration in people that had experienced severe muscle damage, and they were taking mm-hmm. uh, pig's bladders. They, they were, like if you, uh, one guy they wrote about had an accident and lost the calf muscle in his leg. And you could do that with a motorcycle. Uh, Car accident, fall down a flight of stairs, whatever. Uh, but they, what replaces itself in terms of bulk is scar tissue. Mm-hmm. And so they cut the scar tissue out. They put the pig bladder in there as an organic structure. Mm-hmm. And then they did exercises that were focused on that particular part like of the body. Close, close up the to, skin. To, to cause okay. the blood to flow there and bring the stem cells. Mm-hmm. And the stem cells then grew new muscle. And these guys had a 20 to 25% improvement in muscle strength that allowed some of them to ride bikes again, to not Mm -hmm. use canes when they walked, to climb a flight of stairs without assistance. I mean, just miraculous healing from their own stem cells in their own body. And and the insertion of the pig bladder, that decayed and dissipated out of the body. But what was left was new muscle. So if you start to speculate about combinations of these things, mm-hmm. GDF-11 and increasing stem cells, whether it's original sources from mm-hmm. testosterone or or this protein or, or what have you, that they are playing with things that offer such a marvelous opportunity for people to live healthier lives longer that culturally there's still a resistance to and, and monetarily, there are questions about who supports the research, does the government support it, and if so, does it belong to everybody, or does mm-hmm. it belong to a drug company that can sell it for hundreds of millions of dollars? I mean, all of those questions have to be answered for the process to work, but the beauty is that the scientists and the doctors are really starting to break some of this stuff out and make sense out of it that we've never known before. Now, we're on the very edge of everything becoming 
very specific and very specific per person. Mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of this G GDF-11, a lot of well, people... Well, like you can get gene testing now. Too. Right. Gene testing. I mean, we could know everybody's genes, what their risks are, and then forget all the other stuff. Go for the risks. The things you Go have for to worry the things about. that they're at risk for, either by genetics or by their lifestyle, because that, that's a risk, too. Lifestyle is is not it's not just your genetics so you can place yourself at risk for things so it would have to be two two tiered what are you at risk for genetically what are you at risk for lifestyle and then go for that and have your medical care be all about that and then forget the other stuff mm -hmm. you're not getting that other stuff that's not for you so you need to deal with this and then if if we are having to deal with a, a disease like alzheimer's that you already have Instead of preventing it, because I believe that taking testosterone, uh, I'm counting on it, that taking testosterone is going to, because of my risk factors right. and my family history, that, that testosterone and, and the growth hormone and stem cells that are, that are stimulated because of it are going to keep my brain from deteriorating or corroding like the, it does in Alzheimer's. So all of these things that we know now can be put together, but individually for each person, it's kind of going to be the brave new world. Right. Everybody's going to have their own set of food and supplements. Well, but and <laughs> what, we are, what we are learning in that process is that there are certain key building blocks, certain elements that, that cross everybody. Uh, one is testosterone. Mm -hmm. One may be GDF-11, mm -hmm. but those things are the the dam that hold back the the damage and that's what you've learned in the work that you've done on testosterone replacement and the people that you've treated have experienced phenomenal benefit gain in terms of their own health mm -hmm. weight control bone structure yeah uh migraines i mean, I mean all of these things losing, yeah we had a group in our in our office on friday and mm -hmm. one beautiful woman came in and said she'd lost 13 pounds in four months. She was tiny, too. Yes. And she looked beautiful. And she looked... I had to think about the first time I saw her because she looked completely different. Yeah. She just looked younger. And she she was vivacious. And when I saw her, she was just at my desk like this. Well, she was just coming in for her second treatment of pellets. Right. She said she got all of that benefit in the first four months. She got her waistline back. She yeah. bought new clothes. I mean, she was, she was ecstatic. And it wasn't that she just sat at home and ate bonbons because she did not. But... The time before she got her pellets, she had always exercised at least every other day, at least an hour. She had always been active. She had always done very positive things, things for charity, things for her family. You know, a woman who didn't sit down, always doing something. And so she had always eaten right. She would cooked right. She was careful about her supplements, but nothing helped her weight and nothing made her feel better until she got the foundation of getting the testosterone right. back and some estrogen. So that was her key. You can, you can do all those things, but they're not going to bring you back to where you used to be until you take that one element that's going to bring you back to health. And that truly is testosterone if you have to bring it down to one thing. Well, and, and that's the point you want to make because this kind of research to me is fascinating because it I is. have that curiosity and that hope for future gains. But if you're suffering from some of these illnesses and you're waiting on that miracle cure, you don't necessarily have to wait. There are treatments now, mm -hmm. testosterone replacement, other hormone replacements. Stem cell replacement. Stem cell replacements. There are things that are available now. Educate yourself. Become an informed consumer. Find a, a path forward to discuss with your physician. Can I try this? Can you refer me to somebody that does this? I mean, there are doctors here in St. Louis that that uh, specialize in stem cell replacement mm -hmm. regeneration. And we're there, talking your own stem cells, autologous yeah. stem cells, not anything else. Right. So that takes all of the onus off of it. Yeah. It's your own stem cells. They take them out of your fat. They spin them down, put them back in. Right. So. Uh, so, so the religious objections about babies aren't there. Yes, uh, no one. There is, there is no embryo, anything. Right, and and testosterone replacement is another one that may give you the benefit, like Kathy says, in being afraid of Alzheimer's. If you can buy a ten or fifteen year delay, if you're going to get it anyway, maybe for you then the same way they talk about men. You know, men are going to die of prostate cancer if they live long enough, uh, and if you. You know, you're more likely to die of something else. 
Right. So it just it's just so you die of something else before you get Alzheimer's. Yeah. That's really what the the goal is. I mean, but but still, people are living so long now. I mean, right. the, the new average age of death is seventy eight. Wow. That's I mean. When Medicare starts at 65, that used to be the average age, what, right. 45 years ago or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Whenever, so in 45, 50 years, they've they've added 15 years to the life That's expectancy. Ma- amazing. But you have to also understand, just to be th- the, to close with, the medicine has three major problems right now. One is that we have to take care of all the people who are sick now that aren't going to be able to use all of these things to prevent illness. Mm-hmm. So we have to take care of the sick and then have an entire other workforce of doctors taking care of the well that don't want to be sick. Right. Preventive so medicine. preventive medicine, which is was what I'm doing. And then we have to then fight the fact that the government wants to pay doctors less than plumbers, less than I mean less than anybody when they've gone through so much training and spent so much money and are the brightest and the best. So that is going to change medicine too. If that continues, all this other stuff is going to fall down because it's it just won't happen. There won't be as as there won't be adequate treatment for the sick and there will certainly not be adequate preventive medicine for the yet to be sick and doctors will flee and go into something that they can actually make a living for. But the government's devaluing them on a minute by minute basis. And that's where the real fear for the future lies for me. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.